Well, Dr. Bill, um, I was um, I was listening uh, to the Gary No Show, like I, I always do, and um, <clears throat> this was a particular show where he had uh, Heidi Stevenson, the uh, homeopathic expert, excellent, excellent um, authority on homeopathy. Um, and, uh, you know, she contributes a lot. I, I, I see her post. I'm not familiar with her. I see her post quite often on, on, on the Internet, on Facebook. Anyway, on the show, he did a segment about um, uh, toxic, you know, quote-unquote toxic negative people people who spend way too much time on the internet uh, texting all day and um, he mentioned something about um, people um, who you know who who criticize others that uh, that are doing something positive with their life you know, which is, is, is relative because, you know, happiness is different to different people. You know, contentment varies. And uh, about people supposedly that have no life, that criticize others, that have a life, and, um, and he also mentioned... Um, something about uh, it, it'll come to me <laughs> it'll come to me anyway happy Halloween 2012 as you can see with the decor uh, it's probably going to going to be the most infamous Halloween of all because we're supposed to get the solar storms the end of this year there and, won't be one then which God forbid there will not be a Halloween then you mean if the if the grids go out? No. No, that'll be that'll be bad news. If you have the winds and rain, what are the kids going to go out? The kids and are not expose the themselves. Well, to for, for, first of all, last year we only we only had very young children accompanied by accompanied by their mothers come early during the day, and after sundown, maybe one time the doorbell rang. And that was it. Trick or treating, and that was last year. Now this year, I don't know what's going to happen because, unfortunately, in Bergen County, New Jersey, in northern New Jersey, uh, there have been Lurings. more than half a dozen accounts of uh, pedophiles trying to lure young children in their car. In different, in various uh, different sections of Bergen County, New Jersey. And how about the two youngsters so, who killed the girl, twelve-year-old girl, for a bicycle? For a bicycle. Heart. Now this 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 was a businessman. I wonder if he was could have grown up to be a Mitten Romney. What do you mean a businessman? They were kids, right? Yeah, but he took uh, took bikes and he he sold the parts and you know built the other ones and everything. Businessman. Oh, they were, one of them was an adult? Not an adult, no, I, one was 15, I don't know what the other one was. But, no, but, but he's a businessman, do you understand what I'm saying? But, but, but this Just is... Just like people who sell drugs, they're businessmen! But this was very, very much connected to, um, to what I was talking about with, uh, Vinnie Artali Jr. when we did, uh, progressive discussions on, um, on location. Two, two, back to back in two two nights, two three hour shows. Mm -hmm. The second one was three hours and twenty two minutes, but he's more of a, a moderate Republican. So we bucked heads. We bucked heads a little uh, here and there, but he. Um, we were talking about modern day parenting. You know the uh, the the uh, the I guess you would call it the post Doctor Spock era of modern day parenting where you, the, where the uh, young younger generation parents especially the mothers the single mothers
do not believe in spanking uh, their children. They don't follow the rule, the, the rule, spare the rod and spoil the child. They, they believe in negotiating and talking or to, time out. to you. Yeah, right. Where, whereas if they're a minor and you're responsible for them, they have to know, you know, who the alpha is, who the, who, who the boss is, uh, you know, who the parent is. You can't try to be a buddy. So, and this, and this is connected in a way to the big fault that progressive liberals still have. They want everybody to approve of them, like them, love them, whatever. And they still have this big fault, and that is to their detriment. But it is connected to the modern day form of parenting. No spanking. And what happens? The kids grow up to be monsters and hoodlums and criminals. And in this case, the poor 12 year old girl was murdered for a bicycle. For a lousy, stinking bicycle. Not, not, not like an expensive racing bike, a cheap child's bicycle. Devils. It, that, that's, it, it's just, it, I just can't imagine somebody doing that to a cute, innocent little girl for a bicycle. I mean, these are the young men, and I use that term loosely, these are the boys that are being raised with the modern day form of parenting, unfortunately. And you see, it's, it's, it's coming back to bites on the ass. You don't want to discipline your yeah, kids. It has, more, uh, it has more to do, much more to do. I mean, it's it's much more than parenting because these kind of people, yeah, somewhere along the line, they learn that lives other than their own, mm -hmm. there's no empathy for. No, there is no empathy, and that of course goes back to uh, two Timothy, yes, verses three through thirteen. Two Timothy, how people will become. In the end times, uh, and, and it, Timothy three, and it hits it hits the nail right on the head. Without natural affection, without natural affection, uh, uh, a coldness, no compassion, heartlessness, heartlessness, no empathy. Yeah, and this is how people have become or are becoming right now, and it's it's a very sad state of affairs but then again the end times and and the great tribulation uh, are supposed to be a very sad state of affairs to put it very mildly but uh, getting back to what Gary Null said as far as he he had said that um, people that spend more than five minutes or so a day on the internet you shouldn't you should not spend more than five minutes a day otherwise you don't have a life well I, I, I disagree with that uh, the internet is not just going online and uh, researching and doing your schoolwork and reading your email the the com the internet has taken the place in many situations of shopping people shop online people watch movies online they um, they listen to music online. Uh, they they do their banking online and pay bills. Uh, they do many things online. They some people have a home business online. They they promote their agendas. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, internet dating has become more of the norm. It's not uh, uh, frowned upon, and uh, people do not make fun of it. It's actually becoming part of uh, normal modern society, internet dating, uh, f networking to meet new friends, depending on your interests. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So the computer is taking, taking. The, well, it did. It took the place of your stereo system. It, it just about took the place of your television, because you know, if you, if you, now you can. Uh, if, if you have the right uh, software, you can watch cable TV in some situations if you have the right software, from what I understand, of course, and watch movies and, and there's videos. And you on can the, do it on your telephone and your iPad. The iPad. Uh, uh, or computer. People, people, people stay online uh, socially while they're working in the office. They just minimize the, uh, 
the messenger thing there screen and they're on and they got their iPhones and and you know they they spent a lot of time because the computer the internet has become has taken the place of many uh, things in life that we normally used to do on foot leave the house get in the car and drive somewhere but now it's done online I admit that there is a unfortunately a tremendous obsession with texting back and forth with young people um, I'm not just talking about the dangers of texting while driving I'm talking about young people who have their earphone in and they might be talking to somebody and they might be texting somebody else and they're not aware of their environment around them they you know it's like it's like a a cowardly way of not dealing with a live human being either on the phone or face to face looking in their eyes it's it, it's it's like a cop out you know it, it they i know somebody personally and i mean personally a friend a female face to face that i know face, in real life okay not a a virtual cyber friend i know her she rather text then get on the phone and I don't blame Ken Create for saying if somebody texts texts me I am not replying on my on my cell phone I want if they want to talk to me and they have something to say to me they call me I don't go for this uh, this imp impersonal uh, you know a virtual communication for uh, so-called friendship now the only time I text let's say on Facebook or whatever or text from Yahoo from my email the only time I text is with acquaintances people that live far from me people that are not my my personal friends otherwise if my personal friends or relatives want to talk to me they get on the phone or if they want so I have something important to say we get together in person but I, I, I'm against this obsessive behavior with the kids, with the, with the texting. You know, it, it like it's like it's like a cop out. Like they're afraid of dealing with a live human being face to face. So I agree with that aspect of what Gary said. But as far as people spending more than five minutes or being online all day, being like this 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 human being, this loser human being that has no life. I definitely disagree with that. Now, as far as criticism of others goes, I'll, I'll put it this way, and this is this is based on true recent uh, situations that I've I've been through. If somebody, <clears throat> if I'm having a debate, a political debate, which is usually progressive liberal versus right wing conservative, you know, and of course many times the conservative probably hundred percent of the time they don't have any well-researched proven facts to support their their statements they have a ideology you know this uh, this delusion of what's really in the Bible and how life is really supposed to be you know when it's really not in the Bible you know they have a delusional uh, um, opinion uh, based on uh, um, ideology where the progressive liberal usually has proven well-researched facts if they get nasty with me I'm gonna tell them off if they re re resort to personal name-calling I'm not gonna just bite my tongue and defend myself if uh, somebody is wrong I will tell them uh, I'm very outspoken very blunt you know like Howard Stern is and and other people from the past you know was it uh, Joe Pine Lenny Bruce uh, there are many people who have reached celebrity status that are known to be contra controversial because they speak their mind. Well, I do it and I'm persecuted by it. There are many adaptive supporters that uh, uh, are wimpy. They don't have a spine. They just go with the flow. They do, they, they do not want to make waves. They want everybody to approve of them, to like them, to love them. They're always afraid of, uh, afraid of offending somebody. Uh, they walk on eggshells, and I know people personally, and I I've fought with them back and back, uh, back and forth. 
and they call me a bully and they call me a, a negative I have a, a, a negative aura around me uh, of negativity and then Gary calls it toxic negative people toxic negativity well there is such a thing as reality the real world and am I gonna take any abuse or am I gonna uh, have somebody browbeat me and lecture me like I'm a child just because they do not like what I said on the air they they could disagree with me but there's no need to go on and on and on and make a big stink about it because I will I always shot my mouth off I always I was always very opinionated and but I I never lie okay if if I lie I deserve to be scolded and yelled at but if I'm truthful I will continue to be outspoken and speak my mind you know and and there are people where, where where when you speak your mind you hit a raw nerve and a lot of them are like that like for instance with women uh, a, a woman can browbeat you she could yell she could disapprove she could uh, disagree she can criticize she could uh, holler she can go on and on and on and on and make a big deal out of it but as soon as a man does it oh I'm mean I'm a bully how dare a man speak up and tell a woman off that's a double standard it's an unfair double standard uh, also I had a huge debate unpleasant debate about the subject of gifting if somebody gives a gift Dr. Bill was right consider it gone for whatever reason you gave the gift but if a man gives an engagement ring to a woman usually they're quite expensive it is not a gift in itself it is a promise uh, it is representative of a, of a promise of marriage and if the relationship breaks off the woman is expected to return the engagement ring back to the man not keep it and laugh in his face and say ha ha you know it's mine now a man could take a woman to court for that because you're dealing with an expensive item so this person who is a friend of Gary Knowles who is from New York City, originally from Venezuela, and who lives in Miami, Florida now, who knows Gary No. She's a very uh, loud mouth, uh, a pushy, a bossy, overbearing, obnoxious person, uh, but she, she worships the ground Gary walks on. She's, she's, she's like a Gary No groupie, so to speak, you know? Like if Gary was a, a Ron a Bon Jovi, you know, she treats him like that. But, uh, you know, she probably cried that I scolded her, and she, she, she sent maybe an email to Gary, and uh, because she had said Gary's statement was meant for me, and I, and I have it on, a, on, on an email. She, she did say that. I won't mention her name, because I'll, I'll be more professional. I, I mean, I could mention all their names, but I won't. So the point is, yes, a man can take a woman to court for not giving back the engagement ring. Now, of a woman that wants to keep an engagement ring and who expects a man to pay for everything, which is probably an old school woman, I mean, that's a double standard because the woman, women want to be equal, equal pay for equal work. That, that's great. Equal rights, like the women's movement, Gloria Steinem and so on and so on. I have no problem with that at all. Uh, right, uh, uh, freedom of choice, you know, uh, uh, like Roe versus Wade and all that. But if you want to be equal, it has to be equal across the board, not just with making money. It has to be equal with uh, with socializing with other human beings. Also, it must be equal. And uh, they want their cake and eat it. So this woman wants her cake and eat it expects the man it is true the person who initiates the invitation should be expected to pay for the date but if it's a mutual get-together like two people meet on uh, online dating and they get together it's mutual they're there for the same reason they should go Dutch but according to this woman you know 
the, the man should uh, uh, kiss her ass and pay for everything and do everything. So uh, getting back to the original statement, being, being online for a great amount of time, people do not know what you're doing. You could be doing a uh, college uh, work assignment. You could be making money online. You could be promoting a newsletter like newsletter censored. You could be speaking to friends, real, real friends, not friends that uh, misrepresent themselves and are phony and lie to you and pretend they're one thing when they really mean another. Okay, uh, I don't like phony people and I will tell them off and I have told somebody off for misrepresenting themselves and being phony and you know who you are who lives halfway around the world mm -hmm. misrepresentation of using words of a nature that is not just a friendship is way beyond the friendship using those words making somebody think one thing when they actually meant another mm -hmm. and then accepting very nice gifts mm -hmm. and uh, just uh, assuming that they're only gifts from a friend mm -hmm. meanwhile they're using words of endearment and, and words of romance mm -hmm. misrepresentation thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor one of the ten commandments isn't that right Dr. Bill. Yes. Anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know we were on the air. Oh, God. Happy Halloween, 2012. You see my, my children here? They're all here. I don't my know if you could see. children of the dark. I don't know if you could see the, the demon up here. But, you know, I think you can. What does it say? Hold on. Abandon... All hope, hope, all he, all ye, ye who enter here. Oh, wow! And you don't have your glasses on. I didn't read it. It's an old saying. Oh, you just had to memorize. It's an a memorized. It's a saying that appears uh, on the uh, on where on the door or whatever uh, when you enter hell. Oh, gee. Or the you know the traditional conception of hell traditional conception of hell you mean the Dante's Inferno yeah where they they poke you in the ass with pitchforks forever yeah forever I because mean I were an immortal soul that's if you had an immortal soul if you were one of these uh, evangelical born-again holy rollers you would believe in the rapture where the immortal soul flies out of your body up to the sky you know or, uh, was a Lucy in the sky with diamonds uh. but uh, that was the Beatles but anyway before I I pipe my uh, co-host and mentor aboard our progressive uh, liberal pirate ship of Newsletter Censored coming from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. It is a very mild October, uh, what is it, the 20... Saturday, October... Uh, let's see, 31, 30, 29, 20, 27. It's the 27th today? Very mild outside, but we're we're supposed to get a uh, uh, whatever's left of Hurricane. What is this hurricane? Hurricane Sandy. Sandy, as in Sandra. But I've heard the it's latest, coming north. Yeah, but the latest stuff is it becomes a tropical storm when it gets it up here. It is now a Cat One, and it's off of and, Carolina. Uh. I don't think it's reached there yet. So it was it, it was only a category two when it was in South Florida, right? No, it's only been a one. When it hit Florida? Well, it hasn't hit Florida. It's out in the Atlantic Ocean. Oh. Only its uh, left side has hit Florida. Oh, the the tail end. Well, it's like almost six hundred miles wide or something all right 500 so 500 miles so wide even though so the, the left side e of it. even though the media up here in the new york metropolitan area has been making it sound like it's the perfect storm with uh george clooney and we're going to get yeah, buried but, well that's not the problem the problem is and i have not seen this before yeah but all hurricanes that come up 
through the Atlantic Ocean like that. They make a right because of the way the Earth turns and everything. They make a right out into the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. This guy's coming up the uh, eastern seaboard and making a left turn. It's weird. And going into the, 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 the jet stream is uh, going up like this. And there's a storm, uh, uh, a cold front coming east. And the problem is, they say this, I don't know how, this storm and the hurricane or, or tropical storm will merge and cause all these problems. Boy, the Earth is sure But I never saw one take a left turn. And you know what? This year, it has to be. I hope it had its blinker on. <laughs> This year, with the way weather has been, with, with the severe drought in uh, central and southern United States, lasting so long with uh, the melting of the polar uh, ice caps, global warming, uh, the weather has been very, very strange. Uh, I, some, some trees were actually blossoming now, blooming now, which is going to uh, totally fuck up the cycle. And it might kill them, you know. I mean, I mean, everything that's happening, you know, the bees dying, which is probably Monsanto's Roundup ready that's killing them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's just so much going on. Of course, we're living in the end times. Just take a look at what's going on and the solar storms that we're supposed to be getting. Um, you know, and and what's going to happen at the uh, the end of this year? That the planets are supposed to align, it's supposed to line up, or. Ah, that don't mean anything. How I don't times know. I don't know. Before? But it, it's definitely a, a very uh, dire, uh, macabre state of affairs. Yeah, Just to use the right word with these decorations. The hurricane should have went to Texas, okay, where yeah. they needed the rain. We well, don't need it around here. Should have went to Texas, where all the crazy religious nut right wing conservatives are from. Smack them around. Maybe a that's bit. why they got drought. They should have drought of the mouth. You know, but uh, you know, hey, this is this is my style. I tell it like it is. But I don't want any misunderstanding. Of what I said before, I've always been and always will be a, a tremendous, huge fan of Gary Knowles. There's nobody like Gary out there when it comes to contributing to humanity, to the holistic health movement, politically, you name it. He does things pro bono for many people that does, that you know are 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 in a bad uh, situation. He's got an outstanding big heart, highly super highly intelligent, um, amazing memory. He he gets he he does what he does on on only a lousy four hours sleep. I look up to him, you know. I, I, the only person I that should be on a pedestal is Jesus Christ, but. He's on a, a baby pedestal. That's how much I, I, I admire him. But when a person says something I disagree with, I have a right to disagree. You know, well, especially... You know that he said it. And, he, well, look, even somebody of, of superior high intelligence should always realize that if somebody they know is ranting and raving and complaining about another person, they should always listen to both sides of the story not not and never di never take third party yeah but you don't information. know that gary no had anything to do with anything or was it no i know i know but, but what what he was talking about was well, i don't know why you bring what he was the conversation no because what he was talking about was yeah but that's identical of, to a a fight that i had with one of his friends but that's applicable to everybody when oh, I know. pulling out pu pointing out some person but I, I do agree with him about people that excessively text their life away. I do agree with that. But as far as somebody spending a lot of time online that of, of, of that person having no life, that's that's definitely I have to disagree with that. You know. But anyway, let me. Uh, I'm going to uh, formally pipe aboard my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, for this Halloweeny 2012. Whew. Arr, ahoy matey.
and no. welcome aboard. How are you feeling today, sir? Not too good. What's the matter? What's going We've on? We got this stupid storm coming in. Oh, you you're worried. What if the electric goes out? You're concerned. What the hell am I gonna do? How can I work? Well, I you know I posted on my uh, very popular, fast-growing uh, Facebook groups, even though some of those scallywags uh, took some of their friends with them and left my groups. <coughs> um, I, uh, but I still have a, they're still growing and they still have a decent amount of memberships, you know, but uh, I posted the, uh, the sale of the, uh, the very bright LED uh, lanterns that uh, the mini ones were, were buy one get two free <laughs> from drleonard.com Dr. Leonard remember the lantern I showed you folks uh, the end of last week's show they had the uh, the old-fashioned lantern the old-fashioned lantern all right this one I showed you last week all right very cute retro hurricane style lantern. That Don't takes, waste any because we're going to need it maybe. That takes D batteries, right? Yeah. And it's metallic and it has a, a knob here and there's a dimmer switch on it and it's very bright. Could I just do it for one second? No. Did Tru it show up last week? Yeah, yeah it did. Trust me it works. You, it's on last week's show. This, These are buy one get one free yeah, uh, well, they were, but I don't, I don't see them advertising. All right, anymore. I guess you could see it. Excellent. You got the old Brooklyn lantern. Yeah, now. sometimes they call them hurricane lanterns. Sometimes they I call them Brooklyn. Free. Well, not Brooklyn from the ghettos of Brooklyn. I'm sure it's not from Flatbush. Old or, ye old Brooklyn lantern. Oldie ye, ye old old Brooklyn lantern. How come old English put an e at the end? Of, there's a lot of silent letters with with. English. Because they didn't know how to spell. Everyone spelled the things differently. They don't. They don't know how to cook either. You ever see English food? You know, bangers and mash. It's, that's your kind of food. Plain, no seasoning. I don't like Stilton cheese. It's no a spice. blue cheese. It is a blue cheese. I don't like blue cheese. Gorg Gorgonzola is a blue I cheese. I don't like Gorgonzola. I like the mold. I don't like them. I like them all. I think f fungi is is very highly nutritious and very tasty. That's why I am a fun guy. <laughs> hey, that was a joke. These are old-fashioned jingle bells, people. See? It's a little early for Santa. I don't believe in pagan Christmas or pagan Easter, uh, but I well, like wait a minute. I like no, wait a I like the old-fashioned jingle bells. Every time we do a joke, if you are a pagan. Like you... Greg Ferguson dances every time there's a joke. A late late night, Greg Fer. What? If you are a pagan person. No, I'm not a pagan person. If you don't believe in God, yeah. the God of the Bible, yeah, you can celebrate Christmas. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I like the food the and, wrong thing and the is when you attribute it. I like the food and the and the grog. When you attribute spirits. it, spirits. What? The problem is when you have confiscated it and attributed it to one of God's holidays, which it is not. Then it becomes bad. The Roman Catholic Church instituted it as a feast day, not God. So therefore, if you are a pagan, atheist, whatever, you can enjoy Christmas. You can celebrate it, no problem. Okay. Just don't say it's of God. Yeah. That's what they did. Yeah. They took it from paganism. Right. And they made it into a God holiday. And that was... Which is what? Which it isn't. That's where they went wrong. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, oh, by the way, Billy Jr. is safe. He's over there now. I had to make room for the Halloween decorations. But Billy Jr. will come out and say hi later. Anyway, uh, like I said before, I was always outspoken, but I always believe in the truth. Now, if I was outspoken and I was a liar, 
then that, I, that would make me a bad person. But I'm always truthful and I tell it like it is. All right, and it doesn't mean I, I disrespect or I don't like somebody or I don't admire someone. Mm -hmm. It just means I disagree. Now, Vinny Artali doesn't believe that global warming is totally due to the hole, the holes in the ozone layer and to uh, the pollu pollutant making. and the polluting by a uh, corporation. He thinks that it's a combination of that and uh, climate change that takes place every so many hundreds of thousands of years. No, I think it's uh, like every 15,000 or something. 15,000 years? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the figure, but it's, it's, it's lesser than that. Yeah. It's, it's lesser it's than combination, that. It's a combination, but the, the uh, poles are Earth definitely melting. It's axis, whatever, you know? Oh. Well, that, that big earthquake that we had in Chile, South America, that was like 9 or 10 on the Richter scale, mm. that changed slightly the Earth's uh, axis, I hear, uh, believe it or not. I think, I think it even it even j jolted the Earth's rotation uh, ahead a, a little bit or something of that nature. Um, there's a lot of things the media does not tell you in America, like the killer asteroid that passed by the Earth this past year, you know? Well, they don't want to tell people everything. You know, if it's it's if he feels that, and the others, other people feel that uh, uh, global warming is not a big deal or whatever, investigate it. Don't put it down. Don't put it down. No. Let's make sure. Don't put it down just because. Uh, just because big businesses want you to. Right, and let's face it. And liberal environmentalists and animal rights activists and and uh, holistic health people you know, defend the environment. You know what I mean? Like, don't take political sides and automatically believe that global warming is a myth. You know, just because... Well, do you think Monsanto and DuPont and Dow are putting tens of millions of dollars into Prop 37 over in California to defeat it? The proposition that uh, all GMO foods should be labeled. Do you think they're doing that for our benefit? Hell no. No. So when you got a big business who's got a big smokestack out there polluting the damn air, right? And they're throwing money at politicians to keep them from making laws against that and poisoning. Is that for our benefit? No. So let's prove then that global warming is a problem or is it isn't a problem. But let's not ideologically or politically dismiss it. No, it's uh, the fat cats. The one percent always uh, reap the benefits of 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 any uh, any any uh, look uh, any drilling or any mining going on. You know, you you have these reality shows with these these men looking for gold all over the world. Who do you think gets the gold, right? The, the, the little guy who's trying to make it in this world. No, the the the, the big mining company confiscates all that gold, right? Well, yeah, and it's private. It's a private firm. It's private. That's what I've said many, many times. Remember, ISPs. Nobody asked me if I wanted to be an ISP back in the 90s. Yeah. And nobody would have given me the money to do so back in the 90s. So obviously, when you do things like this and you privatize things, well, who are you giving these things and gifts to? Right. Obviously, friends of yours. Cronyism? Crony. Crony capitalism? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, this is what happens. So now, of course, in the millennium. Goldman Sachs, right? And beyond. <laughs> Goldman Sachs is a whore. Okay? It makes money off of other people's work. And that sort of stuff will not be tolerated in the millennium and beyond. Right, just like Monsanto However, makes money off of off of other people, off of poisoning other people, like, like a glorified uh, drug kingpin. All, all businesses are evil. Oh, well, no, they're no. They're not evil. Big, the corporate, corporate level. Under the capitalistic system, as I've stated many times before, there's a basic flaw 
within the system. No employer is going to pay an employee what he is really worth because the employer has to pay you less than you produce for him. Or what good are you? So, so if you get $12 an hour, you're probably worth 50 to him. Oh, I understand. But he can't do that and stay in business. Okay. Therefore, those things will not be in the millennium and beyond. Also, in the millennium and beyond, very strange thing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Every man will have property. Micah 4, verse 4. Micah. Every man. Not for Micah, like the Will Canada. have property. Every and man. And after, of course, the World War III and etc. and their total destruction and this, that, and the other thing. Well, you know, it looks like people are going to have property given to them. Every man because shall, they will not have the wealth yet to purchase. Every man shall have his vine, shall swing his from own, his vine. Yes, his own land and his vine. And his own vine. To and sit the, under and, you know, the world, he will work. In the world tomorrow. In the world tomorrow, yes. Now, uh, before we get to, well, uh, because we were so long-winded on this halloween -y 2012 special, we only have time for one article, but I, I just want to say really quick, well, one article until after... Yeah, guys, I have a small one here. Until after break. Because break takes place at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we usually start around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am going to go on a tirade, but it's going to be short. I did not write down the details, but I have them. Because I wasn't planning on talking about this. But what really infuriates me to the point where I would beat him senseless with this imported Blackthorn Irish shillelagh. There is, uh, there is a, uh, an American a corporate CEO, corporate American CEO that actually, talk about being a bully, he actually tried to intimidate his employees as to who they for. should be voting for in November of 2012. He's not alone. Oh, really? Intimid a voter intimidation? Your job may not be here if you accidentally vote for Obama. That's right. <laughs> well, remember in uh, Cheney, Cheney back in uh, Bush's days, uh -huh. we're going to get hit again if you vote for the other guy. We'll get hit again. Same old, same old. Intimidating people to vote for the fat cat. You know what? If you, if you said that to me, man, I beat you, beat the shit out of you. I don't care how, how rich you are, you corporate CEO. Oh, speaking of, um, speaking of uh, being very demonstrative, there is a f gentleman out there, a former friend, who who has been spouting nonsense on the internet saying that I have man breasts. <gasps> Let me tell you something. This is solid pectoralis majors and minors. This is these are not man boobs. These are functional. They come from years of hard strength training. These so-called man tits bench presses uh, uh, with 90 pound dumbbells so uh, uh, you probably look like Peter Griffin from Family Guy because nobody knows what you really look like but uh, these are 100 percent functional you jabroni jerk anyway jumbaloni jumbaloni what? jumbaloni my grandfather used to say jumbaloni it's not a word I don't, think, I don't think jabroni is a word either. Is it a meat? It's a slang term Jumbaloni? Used, used in pro wrestler. Jumbaloni, does P.S. tell it? Oh, they have, they have freshly Ring made... Ring the bell, please. Thank you. 
They have freshly, you know, I like these friggin' things. I already had two bells on it, but I decided, why go with two, even though they look like gonads? Let me go with four. You know, that'll be a, that, that'll be a, 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 an amusing name for a male go-go bar, right? Go-go gonads? Go-go gonads? That's one of our things here. Gonads? A go-go bar. Balls? Oh, okay. If I ever get to them. Go ahead. This is Ask Marilyn. I hit myself with the show. Ask Marilyn. From Parade Magazine. Mm -hmm. Why do people believe something to be true about a political figure or party, even after they see credible evidence to the contrary? You've just stated a fine example of bias, probably caused by an aversion to accepting the likelihood that one can be wrong. Why, if you're wrong about one thing, you might be wrong about other things? Uh, it's a me. scary thought, all right, especially if you built your attitude about life around the philosophy of a particular political party. Yes, sir. Some people are so biased that they tend to agree with most or all the positions taken by their own political parties. And if you agree with a position taken by a different party, they assume you must be a member of the opposing party. That is the epitome of political bias. And that's one of your problems with Republicans. Shall we wait to this one here? Because I believe there will be a little discussion period. After afterwards. this one? Yes. Yeah. So we might as well wait. It will stimulate a, a, a lot of uh, banter. That's what the problem was. And stimulation. the ban Stimulation. And the banter will eat up time. Yeah. But I promise to uh, to keep my comments to a bare minimum because we were so long-winded in the first. Bear again is a problem. Bear is a B A R E. I am pointing everything to this article. Oh, bear ass essentials. Bear. Bear ass stimulation. Bear ass essentials. Etc. Stimulation. Well, believe me. There are people out there, I, I, I don't know if you saw the show with, uh, with me and uh, Vinny Artali Jr. It but said three. Three shows or no, something. No, there's two shows. It said three. The three number three was there. Three hours each. But he, uh, uh, he, uh, I had a, uh, I bucked heads with him. Oh, you know, like the two, uh, what is it? The, Did the, you just knock yourselves out? The two, uh, 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 the mountain, what are those sheeps called? Long, not the, long, the goats. Big horn sheep. Longhorn. No, big. No, that's cattle. Big horn sheep. Big horn. The, the rams, the males have the curl, and they buck heads. Yeah. Well, I said to him, if a, a very attractive female with a, you know, genetic, is genetically blessed with a very sexy body. If she spends a lot of time looking great when she goes out and she deliberately wears a very provocative, tight, lycra spandex outfit with the cleavage shown and the, and the really short skirt and all that stuff, and she looks fantastic and she dresses provocatively, she should realize, first of all, they do it for attention. Otherwise, why would they wear that type of clothing and why would they spend so much time looking that way, looking great in a sexual manner? Uh, Vinny says that there's nothing wrong with somebody that has the genetics or uh, works out. There's nothing wrong with them becoming, looking the very best that they can possibly look when they leave the house. I says, I agree with you. <clears throat> if you have it, you flaunt it. But... If you dress provocatively <clears throat> in, in, in an alluring matter, in, in, uh, manner in that way and you wear a, uh, <clears throat> a, uh, uh, a club, uh, a nightclub 
type of dress or a Fredericks of Hollywood type of outfit or or uh, what's the other one uh, Amy club wear if you wear a sexy outfit and you go outside you should expect attention from all types of men even even the bad boys that that give cat calls and disrespect the women and try to uh, hit on you men will will oogle you they will stare at you and they will try to hit on you and you should not get angry for that attention because you are wearing that type of outfit you know what I mean you might have the uh, that like Andrew Dice Clay says uh, used to say the fuck me pumps you know this with the stiletto, stiletto heels but if you dress that way expect attention in all ways Vinny feels that uh, all men should control themselves and keep quiet but you what you're dealing with is hormones 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 how to make a hormone how to make a hormone don't pair ring the bell uh, uh, oh man uh, what do you call a whore with a runny nose full Yeah, that was that was that wasn't a great joke, but anyway, uh, yeah. So that's it. We're gonna save. I told him. I says you have. To, it goes with the territory. If you want to attract men that will respect you, you don't dress up in a sensual, provocative, uh, hoochie mama way. You don't wear hoochie clothes. But he feels all men should keep. You know, should keep quiet. Blah, blah. It's easier said than done because I'm telling you, my grandfather, my late grandfather, rest his soul, used to say that a uh, he's. I'm going to quote him, and he put it in. He did not put it in a clinical manner. He, he said it crudely. He said a stiff prick has no conscience. That's correct. But what happens when the stiff prick uh, hits on the woman and she says, "Not interested." Then he, he's got to take a cold shower. He's got to splash cold water in his face. Correct. Because it takes two to do the tango, right? That's correct. Well, this old Italian friend of mine said, do not hit on a woman who is not staring at you. Right. If, if you have to have the, the mutual eye, con eye contact in order to feel that you can approach her. Pursue. Pursue, if that's what you want to do. Sometimes the woman makes the first move in this day and age but you know if, if you don't have the eye like to, like my old friend Tony used to say the eye bang the eye banging he used to call it <laughs> remember remember that old disco song eye to eye contact eye to eye contact she was looking at me I was looking at her yeah contact yeah it was a disco song anyway we're gonna take a break it's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's uh, gastronomic delight known as lunch. And then we'll get back with promo and the readings. Happy Halloweeny 2012 from Mega Life 21 and Newsletter Censored. The infamous Halloweeny of 2012. The most infamous of all times. Mm -hmm. How, you agree? Yeah, he agrees. Mr. LaParka? Oh, Dr. Bill, Dr. Bill. Almost sounds like W.C. Fields, right? Mm, Dr. Bill, Dr. Bill. It smells awfully good what you're eating. Is that toiki? Chicken. Cannellini beans. Oh, with the white kidney beans. Cannellini. Cannellini. You know there's something in white kidney beans that's uh, is supposed to be, uh, I think, like a, like some kind of starch blocker for weight loss? I don't believe in all this crap, all this stuff. There's only one way to, uh, to, 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 to lose weight. It's to cut the carbs. Well, that's the foundation. The late, great Dr. Robert C. Atkins used to say, you always start by changing your eating habits yeah. before you start hitting the supplements. If you if you uh, if your diet is not right, okay, 
if your diet is not right and you start um, popping all kinds of herbal products and um, and nutrients it's it's not going to counteract your bad eating habits your your, your eating habits must change and possibly lifestyle and with the addition of exercise must take place before you start emphasizing your uh, supplementation for weight loss you got to get off the carbs the refined I'm sorry refined carbohydrates which is white flour and white sugar must be gone use stevia or now um, well I'm sure others will come about but as much as I hate the company. The company that makes Splenda has introduced a product made from the uh, Asian monk fruit, which is a uh, Lohan Kuo, uh, which is like a stevia. It's natural, uh, zero calories as far as what the uh, FDA considers zero calories to be. Which they also is not, have another product. Which is not really zero, but it's pretty low. And, and it's safe for diabetics. What? They also have another product made from sugar. It's called ne Nectar S. Yeah. Made from sugar? Made from sugar. I think it's Truvia, isn't it? I'm familiar with Truvia, but I, I don't like the combos. I, I buy Stevia in the raw. Pure Stevia. Comes in packets. And it's great. It really is. I cannot stand the aftertaste, the, the chemical flavor of the uh, your sucralose, which is Splenda, and forget about aspartame. Oh, God. Mm. It's horrible. But, you know, the, the food companies in the U.S. are still using the uh, aspartame. I wonder why that is. You think they have... Could it be campaign contributions, perhaps? All of your diet sodas... Do they have stevia in them? No, only the ones that you buy in Whole Foods and health food stores have that. No, they have aspartame in it. With all of its negative side effects, <clears throat> the chemical aspartame is still being put in sugar-free products in your wonderful American supermarket. And hydrogenated oils which is trans fats are still in your American food products interesting the FDA and the USDA you, do you still think they're on your side do you still think they have your best interests at heart wake up America now you were, we were discussing uh, price gouging now we have hurricane well category one but hurricane Sandra Sandy. Sandy. We don't know if it's male or female. That's right. Could I mean, be, they know could be Sandy like know. Sandy Koufax, right? Correct. Uh, and uh, the price of um, of personal uh, backup generators for you know for homes have uh, gone up. Hmm. Well, what is the range that you gave me? The one that used to sell for four hundred dollars is now up to a thousand. Yeah, because it's hurricane season, and they're taking advantage of the time of year. You see, you see how capitalism works? Price gouging. You know, when they got when they got you by the short hairs, they price gouge because where else are you going to go? It, it, it's it's the devil's economics. It's so dishonest. To me, it's ill-gotten gain when you have to price gouge and jack up I'm sure your prices to high heavens because they got you by the short hairs. I'm sure that Goldman Sachs and all the other banks and uh -huh. AIG and etc. didn't care one iota about morality when no. they caused the financial meltdown. Oh, the words integrity and morality, ethics seem to have been taken out of the American uh, dictionary when it comes to uh, the business world. It's certainly been taken out of American business. And gee, I wonder why these words were taken out of American business. Should I say our political leaders, who are supposed to be our public servants, are possibly their palms have been greased heavily? Yeah. The two-party system? Yeah. Now, um, 
I, um, yeah, actually I heard get somebody on the, was it somebody on the Gary Knoll show who was, was talking about, um, the governor of New Mexico, either, either he is an outstanding independent candidate for 2012, or he should be a candidate for 2012. The, the current uh, governor of New Mexico, who is a libertarian, who What's wants to fix... That's not Gary Johnson. Yeah. He is? Yeah. Yes. Well, I know his vice presidential uh, partner was on Gary Noll the other day, the judge. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. The it judge. Is. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. Yeah, that was him. The judge, yeah. The judge. Judge Gray, I think it was. Yeah, and they were talking about, um, like, a lot of the things that Governor Johnson wants to do sound pretty damn good, but I'm a little leery about libertarians when it comes to the poor. Mm hmm, mm hmm. I don't know. Do they believe in social services to help the poor and make the rich pay for it? Well, then I'm not going to vote for them. I think the rich should pay for just about everything. Well, putting it that way is not the way you should put it. That sounds a little envious or whatever. No, should the middle class? They should pay. Why should the middle class? Share. Why should the middle class? Uh, carry the tax burden. The, the middle class did not carry the tax burden before Reagan. Well, right. that's why they are carrying it. Because, because of the Reagan. wealthy have not paid their fair share in the last 32 years. That's obvious. Everybody knows that. No, they don't. Well, the idiots that, that believe that Romney and Paul Ryan did great in the debates when they actually lied through their teeth those people probably don't know why the, the middle class is paying the tax burden because they're, they're deceived, they're idiots. And of course I'm going to get heat for calling them idiots. But well, wait a minute. The proof is in the pudding. Aren't they idiots? Ann Coulter. Oh, that bitch. Got very little heat in, in, on her tweet calling Obama a retard. And somebody called President Obama a monkey, a monkey? from Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. Some political talk show host. Oh, a talk show host. Yeah. And 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 you didn't hear any backlash. I thought Al Sharpton would come out of the woodwork after after that statement. Al Sharpton right now is focused on the voter fraud crap going on. And he should be because they, the there is a he was there. They're with Martin Luther King. Okay, down the south. Yes. When they denied the blacks the vote. When they shot them. When they brought the dogs out, the hoses, etc., etc., etc. He was there. He was there. And Jesse Jackson knew knew Dr. K uh, King too. He was there too. Malcolm X. So they know what's going on behind the scenes. They were telling the truth, but the media demonized them. I mean. The, um, of course, the Republicans demonized them, but they were all telling the truth back then. I like Al Sharpton. I used to, I used to not like him when I used to be suckered by Rush Limbaugh uh, back in the uh, 80s and 90s. Um, 90s. Mm. 90s? I think so. Hmm. I forgot when I first heard that, 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 that blowhard. Him and Bob Grant. You know, I used to believe they're bullshit. What about Michael Savage? Anybody who was on social services was automatically a, a welfare cheat, according to them. And lazy. They repeat the same crap. You know, they, they don't change. Yeah, him too. Jay Diamond I liked. Lionel. You know, but Jay Diamond was progressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, Sharpton was right. He was absolutely right. And so was Jackson. And so was Luke Martin Luther King. You know. They told. They told it like it is. They told the truth. 
Um, you know, uh, I mean, I used to be deceived. The, uh, I mean, you had you had a show where um, founder of the Guardian Guardian Angels, Curtis Lee, did a show with his wife at that time, Lisa Sliwa, and Curtis was a funny guy from Brooklyn. The way he came out with things, he was very amusing, and Lisa. But he is also conservative. He's conservative. Yeah, he right. he he was with Rush and Bob Grant, and and Lisa was a progressive and. Uh, you know, I should have sided with Lisa Sliwa. I don't know why I was duped. And she was a looker too. Yeah, she's tough too. She knew, she knows how to fight, martial arts, and you know. <laughs> but you know, I should, I, if I would have known better back then, I would have sided with her. But you must examine why. What drove you in that direction? Maybe because I found Bob Grant and Rush Limbaugh to be entertaining. They made me laugh. So I was suckered in to believe in them? Well, that sounds to me like you are a respecter of persons, which God says you should not be. You respecter of titles. You respecter of popularity. Respecter of this, that, the other thing. You cannot be that. Like the because one. Because you must look at the person's heart. The heart. Like people that are quote unquote groupies that have to put the, the people that they look up to on a big pedestal and idolize them. There's an old saying, don't ever uh, meet your heroes because you will be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it is possible for somebody to contribute tremendously to society on a professional level and be a real, like, asshole or antisocial person. <coughs> personally I, I I used to listen to Robert Atkins after Carlton Fredericks died I used to listen to Ro Robert Atkins who took over the uh, design for living on WOR I used to listen to him every day and when I met him in person and and spoke to Robert Atkins in person he was a very aloof arrogant jerk he was nothing like his radio personality see you know, but getting back to what I said at the, at the very beginning, yes, price gouging is not honest, <laughs> and that's that's what they do in capitalism. You know, look at that bullshit I was talking about with the with the American was American Airlines or with the airline uh, industry where they're charging people more for bolted down seats. <laughs> they're looking for reasons to charge you more. That's the point. Not that it actually costs them more. Like, if, if look, if a 757 could carry the space shuttle Columbia to New York with no problem, why do they need to charge you more money for your luggage? For your extra, why do they have to weigh well, your because luggage? Because they may, may, they may lose it, and then they have to find it, and then they have to bring it back to you. And they gotta pay that guy to go out to your house and deliver your luggage to you. How much does the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia weigh? A lot. Uh, would you say it weighs more than all the cargo? If, if, if a 757 jet is maxed out in cargo, what I do you think weighs so. more? I would say so. The Shuttle Columbia, right? I would say so. <laughs> how, they, how they have a, uh, 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 done a job with that, I don't know. I mean, it can't weigh, it can't weigh more than the plane can handle, or it ain't going up. Well, obviously the plane had no problem shipping it to New York. That's what I'm saying. To the it, it wouldn't go up if it was overweight. So them damn planes must be able to hold a lot of weight. It's all bullshit. Advertising is bullshit in the capitalist society. They, they, and and it's, it's like these people I was talking about that I know from my Facebook groups. They take the truth, they twist it, they distort it, they exaggerate, or sometimes they flat out lie to make themselves right when they were originally wrong. They use it as part of their bias, as Marilyn said. As the little thing we just read with Marilyn. And they have a bias. You have a bias. And they make everything either obey that bias or they're not going to go the other way.
And and when you have facts on your side and you straighten somebody's ass out, you're demonized. You're a meanie. You're a bully. You're negative. Or you're wrong. Or they just flat out say you're wrong and they have no facts on their side. They just say, well, you know, I, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Okay. That's like, well, that's like uh, why do you disagree with me? Give someone a scripture in the Bible and give them 18 other scriptures to uh, back it up. And they'll still say, well, you're wrong. What, did you go through all the scriptures and, and check it with the other one? No. Well, then how can it be wrong? Or, or an evangelical, holy roller, born-again person would take one scripture, one, one sentence or verse, and they won't tie it into the other verses surrounding it. Or they won't put it in proper context. Or yeah. they will not go to the Greek or the Hebrew and check the actual der uh, der derivation and meaning of the word. Do doesn't Young... Such as hell. Young's have the original Hebrew Bible? In Hebrew? You can go, yeah, well, you can go anywhere, there's a, there's a, you know, to find out these things. Sometimes you get a Bible where it's, it's right in the margin. Because the Hebrew... It's right in the margin, the it will tell you. The Hebrew translation I hear is... Uh, different like like in the book of Genesis there's some uh, differences with the Hebrew translation compared to the uh, the Greek you there's know. no Greek in the Hebrew I, I mean in the Genesis in the, in, in, okay Greek only comes with the New Testament the New Testament yeah okay the oh. Old Testament is written right. in Hebrew right. and a little bit of Aramaic I believe Aramaic somewhere. okay somewhere in. okay let's sink our teeth into these readings Bear stimulations, teeth sinking in. Well, I always say that, I you know, oh, uh, because uh, I say that when we're behind. Oh, now behind yet. Take your time. South Hackensack, New Jersey. I know it. Well, I'm not far from it. The State Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control wants to suspend the license of a borough go-go bar. I might know where it is. <laughs> after an investigation into allegations that... Dancers took off their clothes and made other lewd gestures that are illegal. So they went, they went nude or topless in in a bar that serves alcohol, which is illegal in New Jersey. Female dancers at Johnny A's Players Club. Wait a minute! I know where that you is. You know where that is. Are <laughs> accused of asking the detectives to buy them drinks and exposing and rubbing themselves against the detectives at the bar. Oh, they didn't like that, the detectives? No, they did not. The acts are considered lewd by state statutes. Yeah, lewd. What a bunch of wussies. Uh, here's a mistake in the paper here. <laughs> Look at this. The acts are considered lewd by state statutes. <laughs> uh, some editor didn't do his job there, did he? What's his name, the editor? No, this was by, uh, well, I don't know the editor, but this was by a Matthew McGrath. Written. These, <laughs> these charges... I love those bells, huh? These charges should send a clear message to owners of so-called go-go bars throughout the state that flouting the law <laughs> by using sexual activity to encourage patrons to consume alcohol is not to be tolerated. Meanwhile, they probably, uh, they probably, uh, are, 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 are a bunch of horny dudes outside when they, when they punch out. A woman who answered the phone on Thursday afternoon did not comment, and she would not provide the name of the bar's attorney. Private dances are permitted in the state of New Jersey. But the dancers and patrons are not allowed to touch each other. Nudity is banned in places that serve alcohol. In all, 12 administrative charges were filed against the bar. The division wants the bar's liquor license suspended for 445 days. Oh, gee. Isn't that a little harsh? 
The bar owners have a right to defend themselves in front of a state administrative law judge. Unlike a criminal trial, the hearings uh, do not occur at the same time. And as a result, a ruling can take a while. The charges were filed September the 15th after undercover detectives visited the bar twice in January after receiving an anonymous tip. The two tip trips confirmed that the tip was correct and investigators began a full investigation. Oh, why don't, why don't they go after real criminals? They carry guns. It's easier to go after unarmed, uh, 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 innocent, pretty little go uh, ex lewd exotic dancers. Lewd, mind you, lewd. Go go girls. So lewd, uh, g lewd, uh, attractive go go dancers or exotic dancers are are just as much a criminal to them it, uh, as let's say big time drug kingpins. Oh yeah. That they 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 can't put. They can't go after them and do their, and their job because cops get get paid a lot of money in in in, in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. And guess what? Today, what? the lewd go-go girl would probably get a longer sentence than a killer because this is one of those <clears throat> quasi religio political crimes. Could I should, could I say this is the same right wing uh, uh, religious nut mentality that was behind prohibition and uh, making gambling illegal back then? Uh, yeah, you could. You know, and making uh, marijuana and prostitution illegal yeah, in the United could. States. And they are doing it for our benefit, by the way. And denying gay people marriage. They are marriage. saving our souls. But how do they know the, uh, what God? likes and doesn't like? Doesn't matter, they do. Just like the do Roman... Do they have a bath phone to God? The Roman Catholic Church knew during the Crusades and Inquisition what God wanted, didn't they? How did they know? Because they say so? Correct. And they say so because they have the military behind them? Correct. In and front the of state. them? And, and the, the state. And, and, the, and the gold. Because they were married to the Holy Roman Empire six times during history. Sounds like fascism back then. It was. And that's why they get away with what they got away with. And the Inquisition. Uh, converting which, by the sword. Which was, that's what I was trying to tell Vinny Artali, it was it's converting by the sword in Europe. Now, now of course, the, the equally greedy and corrupt uh, criminal minds of the uh, Spanish conquistadors had a representative of the church with them holding a big cross, didn't they? Somebody yes, in a monk's did. in a monk's robe, you know, and and they were doing inquisition to the uh, to the Native American Indians after they stole everything from them. But their, they, the gold that was why they were there. I bet the gold, the, their culture, their language. <clears throat> but they had their our benefit because they say so in mind. They were saving our souls. Nah, it's about power and stealing. Oh, it's oh, a license. My, 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 my. It's a license to steal from you, to to pillage and plunder the native people. How cynical you are! Some might call me negative. I but, mean that church is. But who's a telling the truth now? Huge institution in our world today. Oh yeah, what is there? Huge. Eight, eight, eight nine hundred thousand uh, 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 Roman Catholics in the world. That, that revere the Pope? <laughs> Who knows? And the Pope has a bat phone to God, according to them, right? Well, he's the vicar of Christ. He stands in for Jesus. He knows everything. He is inerrant. He cannot err. Really? That's correct. He's flesh and blood, just like we are. Oh. He was born... Of woman. Yeah. And the only one born of woman, besides... Jesus, of course, yeah, who has a high ranking mm -hmm. in God's mind, was John the Baptist, not a pope. John the ba Baptist had, pope. had a lot of spunk, man. Well, because he ate locusts. 
You know, it is. Uh, God does allow. What would you say? He ate locusts and honey. He ate locusts? Yeah. You mean the grasshoppers? Yes, God allows. Uh, he has uh, defined that the locusts and beetles are good to eat. I want to hold your hand. Not those beetles. Not those beetles. You got that something. Da 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 da. Uh, no, but hey, it's probably high in protein. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't eat a dung beetle though. I, <laughs> I don't like a, the name. That's a little nasty. I don't like the name. <laughs> Crying out loud. Do these insects have uh, 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 Mo Howard haircuts with the bangs? <laughs> Did you have a haircut back then, by the way? Back when? The 60s? Did you have well, the... Of course, I had the Beetle haircut. The, uh, uh, like, Sonny Bono had when he was singing with I had with Beetle Cher. boots. I got I you. I had a Nehru I jacket. I got you, baby. No. Yes. You wore a Nehru jacket? A Nehru jacket. Did you, uh, did you do the Batusi, whatever? What is that? Da, da, da. No. <laughs> no, not that. You didn't dance that way? <laughs> I was into cha-cha at that time. Cha-cha. <laughs> cha-cha, yeah. It could be the muffled <laughs> sound of singing in the shower. Watusi, I'm sorry, the Watusi. Or that sing-songy, indecipherable voice from the Muppet Swedish chef. <laughs> Surprisingly, scientists said the audio they captured was a whale imitating people. In fact, the whale song sounded so eerily human that divers initially thought it was a human voice. Handlers at the National Marine Mammal Foundation in San Diego heard mumbling in 1984 coming from a tank containing whales and dolphins that sounded like two people chatting far away. It wasn't Excuse until me. one day, after a diver surfaced from the tank and asked, Who told me to get out? Did researchers realize the garble came from a captive male beluga whale? Uh, I like whales. For several years, they recorded its spontaneous sounds while it was underwater and when it surfaced. An acoustic analysis revealed the human-like sounds were several octaves lower than typical whale calls. Scientists think the whale's close proximity to people allowed it to listen to and mimic human conversation. It did so by changing the pressure in its nasal cavities. After four years of copying people, it went back to sounding like a whale, mm -hmm. emitting high-pitched noises. It died five years ago. Dolphins and parrots have been taught to mimic the patterns of human speech, but it's rare for an animal to do it spontaneously. The study is not the first time a whale has sounded human. Scientists who have studied sounds of white whales in the wild sometimes heard what sounded like shouting children. Caretakers at the Vancouver Aquarium in Canada previously said they heard Oh well. Yeah, you know, but but you know that's a whale of a tail. But you know, Rush Limbaugh says uh, dolphins, porpoises, and whales are actually stupid animals, and it doesn't matter if they get they die in fishnets, commercial fishnets. Uh, the people that listen to Rush Limbaugh are stupid too, including Rush. Ditto heads. Ditto heads, including Rush. Yeah. Anything for the f to make the buck, the almighty dollar is above everything to these to these assholes and to ass kiss for big business at biggest corporate ass kisses your right-wing conservatives uh profit before the planet profit before people they are vile human beings but of course people out there some people will call us negative Ooh, we have a negative aura around us remember one thing just because you disagree with somebody does not mean 
you dislike them. It does not mean uh, uh, you are defaming them. Uh, uh, what you, if you're educating you them? You hear that? You ask kissing groupies out there? What? What if you're educating them? A anybody could learn anything new at any given time. Except if they are uneducable. Right. Or if they are, or have the bias, as we just bias, read or if they're so arrogant and think they know it all, because uh -huh. too many people have them on a high pedestal. Why do you think God says in the Bible that he he cannot reach the uh, high ups of this world? He needs babes. Babes. So he can teach them. That's why he said the the meek. So well, they inherit the earth. Inherit the earth. The Mama Lukes. Well, well, I don't know if they're Mama Lukes. What is right about Mama Lukes? Well, they're a, ma a Mama Luke in they're humble. In Italian, a Mama Luke is like, a, like, like, like a dope, like a, a dim-witted uh, person. You know. Well, that's not what the meek means. The meek means that it's a you know a humble, people, humble people, Humil who are not uh, uh, focused on one thing like the rich are. As it says so many scriptures in the Bible, simple, that the rich can't go to heaven because they have focused on other just things. Simple, everyday, humble, nice folk, the common folk. You know, like the poor that are that are victimized. Yeah. Or the, and the middle class, but middle class are very deluded because they seem to they seem They're to be caught them. up in 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 the uh, in all the. Um, the hype surrounding um, the Tea Party uh, movement, you know, they believe the hype, which which are it's all false, lying conservative propaganda. Why do they believe these lies? I have no idea. Well, we see how much the government grew under G. W. Bush. That's right. And uh, all of his uh, ass kissers and everything are for smaller government. And he created the debt. I mean, he contributed m most of massively it. to the debt. Massively to the debt. Massively. But of course, it's Obama's fault. Not realizing that uh, they voted in a Republican Congress two years after Obama uh, took office. Now you had a, a, a gentleman or whatever send you an email. Yeah. Twice now, I believe. Yeah. Not the same email, but a email. An email. Uh, propagating the same nonsense. Oh. And this conservative uncle. I don't believe it was the uncle. uncle. Was it Uncle Phil? No, it was the gentleman who said that Obama. I mean that the Democrats. Yeah. And, well, Obama first. Well, first he said the Democrats. Democrats occupied the Congress January 2007. Oh, I know what you mean now, and it's and and they the election took place in 2008. Eight, and they did not take the Congress until 2010. January 2010. Yeah, I, I mean twenty I, uh, twenty nine. I, I emailed the person back and told them what you what you said that they're they got their numbers wrong. Yeah, but because Republicans blame, often because he wants to blame everything on Obama because their agenda is based on their obsession, their greed, their their lust for money. They, they 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 want to pay zero taxes and they want. Zero regulation, so they can and they rip don't you want to off. Blame George W. Bush for nothing. They all look. All they care about is money. There, it's a sickness. Okay. And he also uses the same slur for the Democratic Party. He calls it the Democrat Party. It's the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party. Yeah, but they don't like that term. The Frank Luntz did a poll. And it confuses people. It makes them think of democracy, rule by the people. Well, and Republicans don't like that. Well, a real. So that's why they say a Democrat. A real fair democracy of the uh, the America of uh, yesteryear is represented by the uh, the Democratic Party. But unfortunately, the Democratic Party has uh, jumped in bed with. 
corporations. I, I apologize for this rude interruption. Correct. It better not be who I think it is, disrespecting our show. Son of a bitch. Leave it, let it, let it talk, and that's it. You know what? I'm going to make a statement based on this. The, the individual that this is, is a friend of the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. This individual knows when we do the weekly show on Saturday afternoon. Uh, does she care? No. She calls anyway. I notice this is a pattern with women. The women in my family don't care uh, uh, when I do my broadcasting. Uh, the women I have dated in the past did not care. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care. They, 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 they want what they want, when they want it. They want to be, they want to be priority and they want you to be exclusively beholden to them. It's kind of like a tad bit of selfishness. Parents! Why? Why? Because men have a stronger sex drive than them because men have a higher testosterone level, because men kind of like hey. kiss their ass and they One show that woman. they need a woman more than a woman needs a man. Could that be it? Sexually speaking, yeah. One woman can put a man to shame. And they use that when they play uh, power games, uh, mind games with a man. They use that fact. And men, you know what, I blame the men. The men are the ones who do not put their foot down. The men are the ones who cannot boycott getting laid. <gasps> and that's why they do what they do. It's a power uh, uh, game, you know. She knows when we do the show. She knows when we do the show. And then if, I, if you tell her, she goes, Oh, I'm so sorry I, inter I interrupted. They know how long we do this show. And I'm not being negative jerk-offs out there. I'm being truthful. I don't, I don't want to hear about this negative aura on online. Parents Jerks. who want to reduce their kids' exposure to pesticides mm -hmm. may seek out organic fruits and vegetables, but they aren't necessarily safer yeah. or more nutritious than conventional foods. Mm-hmm. The nation's leading pediatricians group says in its first advice on organics. Science has shown, hasn't shown, that eating pesticide-free food makes people any healthier. Of course American, it does. The American Academy of Pediatrics said. Now do you see how all these government agencies are all siding with the toxic poison chemical producing corporations like let's say a Monsanto do you see how they are siding with them well you see what the DDT companies did to Rachel Carson back when but it took victims for them to do something about DDT didn't it there had to be victims unfortunate victims of DDT before they took action Theoretically, oh, man. there could be negative effects from current pesticide levels. You could tell I'm getting pissed because I'm, I'm whacking my hand with the shillelagh. Especially in young children with growing brains. Yeah. But rigorous scientific evidence is lacking. Now I'm calming down because I'm resting the shillelagh. Said Dr. Janet Silverstein. <sighs> boy. A co-author of the Academy's new report and a pediatric endocrinologist okay. at the University of Florida in Gainesville. We just can't say for certain that organics is better without long-term controlled studies. There have been studies. They just don't pay attention to, the, to those studies. It's bullshit. They don't want to spend money on those studies. But, but that, that's not to say there weren't studies done already. The report published on Monday in Pediatrics echoes a Stanford University study released last month yeah. 
that research concluded that while eating organic fruits and vegetables can reduce pesticide exposure, the amount measured in conventionally grown produce was within safety limits. Their safety limits, not in real safety limits. Remember, when G.W. Bush took office, right. the allowable arsenic levels were upped. Upped. Because that's part of deregulation of these corporations. Parents should aim to provide a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. <sighs> Fuck. Organic or not. Organic is was proven time in and time out to be far superior than inorganic produce. Time and time again. Proven. And pesticides are poisonous in any level. Along with plenty of whole grains and low fat or fat free dairy products. Well, I like to emphasize green, leafy, dark green, leafy vegetables more than whole grains, to be honest with you. Whole grains, if they're organic, are, are good, like brown rice, uh, brown basmati or jasmine rice that's organic, like the company uh, Lundberg, the Lundberg family from California. Excellent product, you know, they're good. Uh, I like millet, I like quinoa, amaranth. You know, but um, I, I please excuse all this noise that you hear. This, this is what you get for going all natural here. And plus the, the staff members are a little no noisy. Anyway, finish up, please. They may call themselves Democrats or Republicans, but there is no real difference. They both eat from the same financial funding trough. I hear the Romney and the Obama family eat organic. That's what I, I read an article on that. Congress sets the table for laws and regulations, and then only the large contributors are invited to the banquet. The menu has been prepared on K Street, not Main Street. It only contains those foods that the large contributors enjoy most. Profit tax breaks, excuse me, profit, tax breaks, and special privileges. Uh, but the mainstream media on television doesn't tell you all these things. They never give you the real true side of the story. Now, do they? You shouldn't have to rely on a progressive radio on the internet to get the real truth. You should be hearing, hearing the truth from the major network media on your local television news, just like the international news reports. But I hear the BBC is even getting a bit corporate too now. Ooh. I was told by a very reliable, uh, uh, a great, um, uh, very reliable source in, in England, in the, um, Great Britain. They're, they're getting, they're selling out too. Anyway, finish this up. The morsels that have fallen to the floor are for the poor and the middle class. Yeah, the morsels, the crap. They have disgraced our public servants, teachers, police, fire, public workers by blaming them for the current financial situation. Oh boy. Poor decisions of our elected officials and financial community are what have put our country in crisis. Elected officials never examine the excessive salaries and bonuses of CEOs and executives or large corporations that receive excessive tax breaks. That would be biting the hand that fills the political funding trough. There we go. They never compare their salary, retirement, and medical benefits to that of the average American. And there goes the truth about the two-party system. We must change the way campaigns are funded so our elected officials are not beholden to corporations, PACs, super PACs, and special interest groups. Campaigning should be limited to a month or two. With current technology, you do not have to whistle stop across the country. The money saved could be used to create jobs. What does Dr. Bill say on his website? Many things. This stuff, this whistle stopping, this stumping and all this shit has never exposed the true candidate to us. No. And never will because the candidates come out with PR. Scripts written by other people. Nothing from their core, from their gut, 
from their own minds. The uh, just like a um, a fine gentleman, a friend of mine from Montreal, Canada says, Americans are in fact lemmings, headed off the cliff into the sea of despair. They are lemmings. They are fools. They have been brainwashed by all this propaganda, and the and the U.S. media is not and probably has never been a liberal media and they will not tell you the real truth this is the the end result of eating food from an american food company that you find in your supermarket see this skeleton this is what you have to look forward to people especially the poor and low income people this is what the uh... the fat cats the one percent corporate CEOs with the conservative politicians. This is what they want for the poor. See the skeleton? Hold on. We had a message recently coming from the 1% demonic corporate CEOs and the uh, right-wing Republicans. Message for the poor. Sounds like we are here to kill you. In line with that. The Zylons. In line with that. In line with that. A local business, uh -huh. La Strada Gourmet, La Strada, was forced to evacuate its location suddenly on October 14th, knowing it was the day of the food drive. Mm -hmm. In the midst of all the stress, Eugene Meyer and his employees packaged all the boxed and canned goods for donation to those who needed it more. The record dutifully reports the news from Washington and the world, but it is this local support that really sustains us at the end of the day. I just wanted to say thank you. See the skeleton there? Yeah. Well, if they do, wouldn't have done that and packaged up the food and got the support and everything, that's where the poor would have been. Skeletons. Skeletons. You know what? I think that skeleton is going to be here all year round because that represents, well, not this, because I think it's going to kind of get in Billy's way. <laughs> but that skeleton, um, it's going to be around because it's, it represents what the poor, what the little guy uh, is, has to look forward to if he keeps on uh, allowing the uh, corporate plutocracy uh, backed by right-wing conservatives to take total control of America. And on a lighter note... <clears throat> yeah, on a lighter note, since it is kind of like a... A fun holiday special. Al J, as we learned. Al J, as an algae, as an algae. Had been on Earth for more than 1.6 billion years. The oldest known food source, phytoplankton, right? Algae. Early algae existed when there was hardly any oxygen in the air. Early algae. Is that like early peas? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Over time, they produce so much oxygen weight Early peas. Uh -huh. that it changed the atmosphere. They put enough oxygen into the air that animals and people could breathe. Without algae, none of us would be here. I, I love algae. I, I, I believe in taking chlorella and spirulina. Definitely, you know. Plants also produce oxygen, but algae were mo producing oxygen more than a billion years before plants even existed. The algae in the ocean are responsible for more than half of all the oxygen we breathe today. Some experts believe they may have produced as much as 85% of the oxygen in our atmosphere. 
Algae also help our atmosphere by trapping carbon dioxide and taking it out of the air. That is right. That is true. Carbon dioxide is poisonous to people and animals. Mm -hmm. It also traps the heat in our atmosphere, warming the planet. Plants also take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When plants are burned or they decay, they release the carbon dioxide they had pu uh, pulled in. In some cases, it may take 100 years for the carbon dioxide to return to the atmosphere. But after algae die, their trapped carbon dioxide sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Could be a million years before it returns to our atmosphere. This helps slow global warming. And algae just happens to be the best source of uh, biofuel for those of you that think only sugar cane and corn uh, are, you know, should be used to make uh, ethanol <laughs> biofuel. You know, no, algae could be, uh, without touching the food supply, algae can make uh, an excellent biofuel. Algae are a super important food source. Yes. Sea animals from tiny one-celled zooplankton to giant whales all depend on algae for most of their food. Humans eat algae too. Seaweed, a type of algae, is an important part of Asian food. It is in everything from bread to sushi. That's right. You may be eating algae without realizing it. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, what is that thickening agent used in products like even ice cream? Agar. Yeah. Kelp. Which is kombu in, in Japanese. And other types of algae are used as thickeners in foods, such as cheese, pudding, chocolate milk, orange juice, and soup. <coughs> It's not a parrot on my shoulder, it's just a shillelagh. Algae keep ice cream smooth and help get rid of ice crystals. There you go. They can also be found in products such as toothpaste mm -hmm. and pet food. As a thickening... Check the ingredient list on some of the foods in your house. If you see agar, alginate, or carrageenan, it means there are algae in your product. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's, there's a substance in, in kelp and kombu that uh, detoxifies strontium-90 uh, from a radio a radioactive, a, a radiation-poisoned uh, human being. Was I think it's alginic acid, I think. It, I, I could be know. wrong, but it, there's a substance... Uh, in kombu that does that. I mean, I'm, when it comes to algae and sea vegetables, number one source of minerals and trace minerals known to man. Outstanding. Continuing. Yeah, are we okay with the technical end of it? Has anything changed? Because I saw, not, not that I, I see. saw a flash. All right, I go will ahead. try to be quickly here. All right, all right, all right. All right if, if you can. Sometimes algae can cause problems. They need certain minerals to help them grow. And if there are a lot of these minerals in the water, algae grow like crazy. Sometimes algae's wild growth is caused by pollution such as sewage runoff. Algae love the extra nutrients found in animal or human waste. That's a shitty way to look at it, but... You know. Well, they like poop. Can yeah, Mr. Hanky from South Park. They like poop. Heidi ho. Speaking of poop, somebody God. sent a perfect birthday picture around on Facebook the other day. For a loved one? For a loved one, yet. It's a cake, but it looks just like an, an ass crapping out uh, fecal matter. Oh my and, God! And the fecal matter is some kind of what chocolate mousse or some something. Yeah. If it only were. <laughs>
If there are too many algae in an area, they can strip the oxygen from the surrounding water. Overall, algae do produce more oxygen than they use, but at night, when there is no sun, they can take in so much oxygen that there is not enough for the fish to breathe. That's true. Also, when algae die, the process of decay uses a lot of oxygen. Large groups of algae can block sunlight from reaching plants living in the water. Also, certain types of algae produce poison that can kill fish or make shellfish poisonous to eat. I think algae is, is, is an outstanding aquacultured uh, food source for humans, like I said before. It isn't safe for people either. Well, it depends on the algae. Come on. Chlorella and spirulina are, are, are among the world's greatest superfoods. Besides being a major food source, royal, experts believe royal jelly too. algae could be an important source of fuel and fertilizer. Like I said before, they could also be used to clean up sewage. Yeah, who is making that sound outside? It's always somebody making noise on a Saturday afternoon. Just as animals store extra food as fat, mm -hmm. algae store extra food as oil. Researchers hope they can use algae oil as a biofuel. So does that mean that um, there is a possibility that a marine algae, phytoplankton, could contain high omega-3 fatty acids? Well, right Since now they're algae... just talking about using it as a fuel. As a fuel, okay, okay. For example, the United States Navy is experimenting with using a mixture of algae oil and animal fat to fuel its ships and aircraft. If algae are put into a tank full of sewage, they can eat much of the harmful waste. The algae growing in the sewage can then be fed to livestock. Oh, great. That's, that sounds pleasant. After the, they ate the poop? After they ate human waste, our li the livestock, which will become our pork chops and ground beef, uh, were actually nourished by human fecal matter. That's a, that's a lovely thought. Soil and grain. Soil and grain, yeah. <laughs> well, algae uh, uh, krill, which are very tiny shrimp-like creatures that live in the Arctic and Antarctic, they, they, are, they have a, a naturally uh, outstanding uh, amount of omega-3 fatty acids, and uh, they are a great natural source of astaxanthin. And I believe salmon like to eat krill, and krill, because of the astaxanthin that, that creates the orangey color, might be the reason why salmon are reddish-orange uh, inside, their flesh. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the krill feed on uh, their scavengers, like all shrimp, but I think they feed on, on phytoplankton. So. The omega-3 and the astaxanthin could be coming from the algae. Algae can clean the environment and feed the animals at the same time. For years, people have been gathering algae from the shore, feeding them to livestock or using them as fertilizer. I think, I think, um, I think chlorella and spirulina should be added to, let's say, um, veggie burgers, you know along with the tempeh and uh, uh, queen quinoa. Algae often form partnerships, <coughs> relationships. I use millet to hold it all together. You gotta have something sticky. With other organizers. Yeah. For example, lichen is formed by a partnership with a fungus and an algae. That's why I'm a fungi. I love mushrooms. An excellent meat replacement for vegans, by the way. I, oh, I love Chinese black fungus. Uh, I, 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 was, I was told about it by Dan E. Mount, and then I, um, I heard Gary No mention it, and it definitely has medicinal and nutritional attributes. Great taste. Shiitake mushrooms, outstanding. Maitake, the hen of the forest, great for the immune system. A great, beefy, what? Talking to the guy, I said, that's maitake. 
No, it's your talkie? Yeah, my, my talkie. talkie. And when you go to the bathroom, you have shit talkie? D Dan I was not going there. Dan corrects me. He, he says it is called, it's pronounced shitake. I said, what is that, like saying karate? I don't know. If it's, karate? If, if it's Japanese, I don't think it would be. No, maybe if it was French, it would be shit, you know, shitake. No, it's shitake. It's, uh, it's probably the Japanese way of pronouncing it, but uh, there's a company where you can buy the uh, organic uh, spores and grow your own if you have a certain tree that's in the shade. Has to be very shaded. In the shade of an old apple tree. Like, but you know, certain woods, uh, uh, certain uh, food source mushrooms require certain wood, like oak. Uh, they like oak trees. Conifer, which is what a pine. I believe conifer is a, is a pine tree. They ha they they prefer certain oak. I mean certain wood. And I happen to have a cluster of pine trees in my yard that is very very shaded. So maybe I can propagate my taki, not your taki, but my taki mushrooms and shit take at home. Shit ake. Shitake. Shitake. You know, I made homemade spaghetti sauce with shiitake mushrooms that I soaked overnight, and mm. they it was the de delicious with the organic whole grain. Mm. I mean, whole wheat pasta. Outstanding vegan spaghetti sauce. Mm. Really, I'm seriously because shiitake have a a very pungent, hearty uh, aroma and taste. Uh, very beefy like. Portobello mushrooms are 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 outstanding. Great for the grill. Uh, baby portobellas are cremini mushrooms, by the way. Cremini, cremini, or is it crimini? Cremini. Clitoris, clitoris, Caribbean, Caribbean, tomato, you, tomato. You say tomato, I say potato. A po no, potato is really, people think potato as being an Eastern Europe or an Irish uh, vegetable. Oh no, it came from Peru. Peru. The it has a bunch of potatoes varieties. The, the in the high in the high in the mountains of Peru, the Incas grew peanuts. In Spanish, it's mani mani, and uh, Indian, I think it's cacahuate, cacahuate. The peanut is 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 uh, Peruvian from the Incas, um, and also uh, with the uh, and quinoa, of course, but with the potato, there are. Many thousands of varieties of potato mm. that people don't even realize they exist. Yeah, different, there's a purple one too. Different colors, yeah, dark purple. Uh, actually, the purple yam is very nutritious from Southeast East Asia, and it's used in desserts. It's very sweet. The purple yam. I, I have cooked it before. It has a wonderful, much sweeter than the American yams. You know. I am what I am. Okay, okay, okay. No, the yam I saw the actual, is a powerhouse of nutrition. I saw the actual Popeye as a toy. You know, as uh, action figure. Yeah, he moves when you wind him up. Yeah. But I'm saying, Popeye looked different, just like uh, uh, Mickey Mouse. Popeye looked more like when Popeye. When they first came out. Popeye, Betty Boop, Felix the Cat, Mickey Mouse looked more like like they should look. And then uh, when, what is it, uh, how, was it Hal Roche that created? Nah. Who created them? Else. But they all knew each other. They were all spin-offs of one another. Betty Boop was originally on, on the first Popeye cartoons. Oh, wow. Felix, <coughs> I anyway, think, was on Betty Boop. Anyway, this toy was... You know, looking like he did when he first came out. Yeah. Comical. Rather than that more gentler... <laughs> no, no. Out later. Pop but he did still smoke a pipe. Popeye had a funny looking, uh, sour puss like look on his face. Real funny looking. And arms. He had no biceps. Deformed guy, you know, and uh, he had huge forearms and skinny biceps. He was all <laughs> forearm. I love Popeye. Well, you loved olive oil too, that rail. Uh, skinny as a rail. <laughs> I don't think she gave birth to Sweet Pea. I think Sweet Pea was an orphan. Orphan. Or yeah. is it orphan? 
Here's an orphan. Yeah, I don't think she gave birth to, uh, to Sweet Pea. You, they would never show it back then on cartoons. Wimpy loved hamburgers. I'll, I'll, pay, I'll gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today. You sound just like him. <laughs> a hamburger without pink slime. Yeah. But, uh, hey, we don't hear much of that anymore, do we? Nah. They're probably back in business. Maybe they paid some of uh, the media to keep their mouths shut. Keep their mouths shut. shut, yes, of course. About, do you know the McDonald's hamburger is like a, ver a very small percentage of beef, of real hamburger meat, and the rest is all crap? They're probably all like Why that. do you think I posted a, a photo of, of, a, of like, a, like a Greek soldier with a sword holding up the head of Ronald McDonald that was severed from his I, body. I read today like in the paper Medusa was, yeah. a veterinarian. Yeah. And she was talking about organic and et cetera too. And she made one claim, which I, I didn't agree with the other stuff, but this particular one. She said that byproducts, when the canned cat food says byproducts, it's okay. Because byproducts are high in protein and just as nutritious as other cuts of meat and etc. Well thank you very much but I don't particularly care for a pig snout in my byproducts. I love uh, pig snouts and pig cheeks and pig ears. Uh, what do you well, think? Well then eat it by itself. What do you think is in head cheese? Which, I don't eat no which, stinking head which cheese. Is, it's in a gelatin which is a, a German or a Polish uh, cold cut. It's uh, from Europe. It's delicious. You mm -hmm. ever have uh, blood and tongue uh, uh, loaf? No. Uh, or black head cheese, no. which has uh, blood and ah, you don't know what's good. No. You call yourself but a if German? I eat a tongue from Pennsylvania. I will eat tongue. He's from Pennsylvania. Not byproducts. Oh, oh no! Well, no, I don't want crap. I want. Well, that's what she said was fine. I want prime cuttings. For the animals to eat. Animals should be fed properly. Jeez. Animals should be fed what nature intended them to eat, depending on their species. And they should be giving, just like humans, certified organic, highly nutritious foods <laughs> for optimum health to keep the veterinarian away. Why do you, you know, and, and, and energy level and long life, maximum lifespan. I mean, why do, why, I always wonder, gee, why do all these cats and dogs uh, come down with all of these uh, diseases when they become seniors, you know, tumors and, and all these diseases that dogs and cats get? I mean, they shouldn't be getting. Maybe it, it is all the nationally advertised pet foods that have all these uh, uh, hormone lace byproducts, meat byproducts, in the pet food? Well, it is a degeneration process <clears throat> and a lowering of the immune system. When, when a cat gets Which a, is not theoretically <sighs> applicable to old age. When a cat gets a tumor, you love cats. I do too. I like animals in general. I like dogs too. But cats are easier to take care of. When a cat gets a tumor in its in its later years, that's not normal. It's not normal. Just like it wasn't normal for laboratory rats to get huge tumors almost as big as them by eating genetically modified foods. All right. But there's nothing. There's no difference between. Uh, you know, uh, uh, GMO and regular food, oh, but, uh, and we will put millions and millions and ten million, tens of millions of dollars into a political campaign to make you believe that. You were you were being sarcastic just now, right? I am being in California with Prop Thirty Seven. Prop Thirty Seven. To to our friends, our fans in on uh, in California, make sure you get out and vote. Because that will set the precedence, right, for the...